Hi there, my name's Andrew from Parker Adams Boat Sales and we're here today on a beautiful 2023 Sargo 31 and I'm joined by Richard from Sargo. So I'll let you just introduce yourself. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, Richard, Sargo Boats UK and Ireland. I've been importing the, the brand into the UK uh, for 15 years now. And those of you that watch the channel will know that um, we're very, very pleased to be the approved used boat partner. So we co-broker uh, the used stock that comes through. And this boat, well, it's just about used, isn't it? It's barely used. Hardly, hardly, hardly used. used. Uh, so really excited to bring you the rest of this walkthrough tour. We'll be going, starting off outside. Um, you'll see the boat's got copper bottom. Um, it's copper coat? Copper coat. Copper it's not coat. copper bottom. Copper coat. Coating on the bottom. <laughs> um, and loads and loads of really cool features. So looking forward to bringing you the rest of this walkthrough tour. Before you get started, check out our Parker Adams Superstore with loads of main brands for upgrading your boat, such as Raymarine, Garmin and Fusion. Check it out after this video. Okay, so as we've said, we are standing here underneath a Sargo 31. It's a 2023 boat, so it's basically new. It's got a few hours on it, and we're joined here by Richard from Sargo. Hello. Um, one thing that I love starting off the, um, the walkthrough tours, particularly underneath the Sargos, because they look so purposeful. They've got such a great presence to them. And when we start just looking around, um, one of the things you notice about the Sargos that other brands don't necessarily have is this metal strip that runs down the front. And I've just been questioning Richard as to what's the reason for that strip and you give me a very elegant answer. They, obviously the Scandinavian heritage they uh, they go bows to their own pontoons lots of rocks uh, so it just protects the gel coat from there and obviously in the UK as well where we like to stick them on um, pilings here when we're when they're sat on the floor um, obviously just protects everything underneath there. And well, that's, that's, the, that's the official term. What you actually said is so they can bump into things. Yes. But, but yeah, the, the, I, li I, like the, strip. I like the official <laughs> one, that's better. Uh, so this boat, as you can see, it's fitted with copper coat. Um, that has been on there for, what's well, about six months, is it? Six, yeah, nine months? Just over six months, um, yeah. Copper coat, they normally say, has got a life of between seven and ten years, depending on how you look after it. Um, so there's plenty of life there. So the new owner of this boat won't need to worry about anti-fouling it for many, many years. Um, fitted with a bow thruster. And as we go around to the back, you'll see this boat's also fitted with a twin stern thruster setup, which is pretty cool. Very good. They they're tend to, uh, to be used quite regularly by uh, people on their own. So for shorthanded usage, and just while we're out here, you can see there's a side gate through the whole door here, um, which actually pontoon height is probably about my hand height. So it enables you to step straight out from the wheelhouse through the door onto there, which um, I'm sure Andrew will cover a little bit later on when we get onto the boat. Yeah, I just think it's those little features that just, these boats are so well thought out. Um, something that impressed us every time we go on a Sargo, there's something else that I notice, something else that I find that's been thought through and just clearly thought very much with the owners in mind. So this boat is fitted with a single engine. Um, so this is a Volvo Penta it's a D. Uh, it's a D four. D six. D six. Got it wrong already. That's why Richard's here. Correct D, me. D six four hundred Duoprop. Um, as you can see, they're missing an anode on the back. That's just we would take them out. To take them out to, off the. Sorry, take the anodes off when they're out of the water. Uh, but yes, you can see the twin stern thrusters, which was added for this customer. Uh, everything else on the back here is quite standard. Yeah, and the trim tabs also, I noticed earlier, they're fitted, um, they've got the Mente Marine auto tabs They have on the auto trim tabs on there, yes, with their own little gyro. Um, makes using the boat absolutely painless. It's yeah. really nice. That's really nice. And a pretty chunky out drive there, and of course you've got the duo prop, um, which is standard on all of those legs. So what we're going to do, we're going to go up and then show you lots more of the features up on board the boat. Right, so we're now up on the top of the boat. Actually, I'm just looking at the view for a second here. This is the view that not many people see from Hamble Point Marina. So over the top of this bank, you've got Southampton Water just behind us. It's quite a nice place to see, actually. Don't often see this view. Um, but the reason for being here is on the transom of the Sargo 31. And one of the things I love about the Sargo boats is this little feature here. And it's what's, not, the, what's the purpose for this then, Richard? Not so little. Um, as everybody that has a boat knows, yacht or power, you'll be able to... Uh, <coughs> get at the leg should you get one of those horrible prop wraps. 
uh, crab pot boys and all the other stuff that aren't marked in the UK. It's perfect, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so you can access the back of the boat and get lift the prop up to uh, to untangle it. And the style of this boat is very much around that explorer boat. So you are going to be taking this boat distances and exploring places. And quite often you do get ropes and things that are left in the water. So the ability to be able to lift that drive up and then manually unwrap something without having to get in the water, I think is fantastic. Absolutely great. Um, and has been proven on a few of these people cross channel. Um, yeah. In fact, I was on a boat where we did have a prop wrap right in the middle. And made hopefully it, use your access hatch. We did, <laughs> made it very easy. Um, in terms of tender access on the back of here, um, we've seen we've sold quite a few of these boats now, and quite a popular option is to put some snap davits on the back. In fact, I've seen them. I've seen you gluing patches in your office a few times with some tenders inflated. We do, yes. I mean, the, it makes it painless again to be able to launch your your tender off the back of here. Step in, great space, and the fact that you can keep all of your fenders all out of the way, it's, it just adds to that usability and you know that's what the boats are about really. Yeah absolutely so let's step inside the cockpit space. The cockpit I think is a, is a good layout here and you'll see down below there's cockpit cushions for here as well and the cockpit cushions go both onto the um, the, the bases of the seats um, but you've also got seat backs as well which again just shows how much things have been thought through because it's comfortable to be out here because it does have that rugged feel that you could go out for a day's fishing here but at the same time, you could sit around here with a family with drinks as well. Absolutely, and you know the cockpit table, which is stored underneath the engine hatch lid, goes onto the um, two stainless steel posts there, which does, from a family perspective or lounging with a beer or two, yeah. uh, helps. <laughs> And then other little features, um, I'm not sure, I should have researched this, I'm not sure if there's a fridge in this one, there isn't in this one, um, but there is the option on some of these to have a fridge unit as well, which again is just really practical. Yeah, and it could be retrofitted on this boat quite Perfect. easily. Ideal. And then there's also storage um, in the side wings here, so you've got a nice storage locker just inside there. That one has the hot and cold deck shower in it, uh, and this one has your fuel filler. Um, in there as well so it's all nice and protected a from the weather but b if you have any spills it it tends to sit in a little hollow there and enables you to mop it out very easily actually it's nice to see that because so often the um, if people do leave their fuel filler undone that's so often a way that people get moisture into the tanks Absolutely. and if that accident does happen on this you stand a fighting chance of not getting any liquid in there so. right i think we'll come back and do the engine um get the engine access a little bit later so let's crack on and go inside nothing to do with the fact it's really cold out here. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go on inside the, the best way that i describe the saga boats is really practical but useful but also cozy um, this is a boat where it's fitted with heating this boat so it really does make it an all year round boat um, inside here there's lots of light that comes in throughout all the windows here but this roof here can also open the whole way so we're now bathed in light and we have an enormous sunroof out there as well absolutely um, and this particular boat has a solar panel on the top of the sunroof um, so yeah, nice. for all of those long trips that you do or as Andrew said the explorer side of it if you're on a, a mooring or swinging mooring uh, no need to worry about power. That will keep up with all of the boat systems. That's really that is good. absolutely perfect. Yeah, that's absolutely ideal. And then in terms of the way that it's set up for cruising, so we'll talk about the cruising side of it first of all. You've got seating here for three people, maybe a, maybe a fourth a little child there, but pretty much three. Um, and you've got little touches, so you'll see this in a second, you've got little footrests here. So if you've got people who are sat up on here, you've got, everything's been thought out because you've got the grab handle there exactly in the place you'd want it to be. The feet sit really in a great position here. Um, just under here, you've got access to gubbins, bits and bobs. You've got a remote control there for the bow thruster, the stern thruster, and also the anchor is on that. So the anchor, you've got access to control the windlass both on the bow and then also within uh, here within the cockpit space. So it's really practical. But of course, this does also have a back to it. So you can slide this into that position there. And once it's in that position, you've got this really good U-shaped seating area where, how many people would you say you get around there? Well, quite easily six. Yeah. Um, the table actually does go up and down. So if there's some larger or smaller people, you <laughs> can lift the table up slightly, uh, but it is actually designed that the table drops all the way down to just underneath the seat level and the backs form um, a base for another double berth. Uh, and, it's, and it's the backs that do that? It's the backs that I do that. I didn't realise that. That's quite cool. So quite often on boats you always have that table compact, but it's always a question mark of where on earth do, do I store, store the cushions? Yep, but absolutely. been thought about. And of course if you're using the backs, that means you're getting a little bit more width in there as well. Absolutely. It's a dual purpose so it on it all there. works very well. Um, a lot of people drop that down and use it as a footrest for a coffee table. So yeah. <laughs> it, particularly if you're sat at the back of the boat, 
and wanting to watch your TV. Seamlessly done there, Richard. There we go. <laughs> so okay. television there, which is in a, a perfect position, because you'd never know it was there. And in a boat like this, having a, a large television would potentially dominate the cabin, it would. but having it tucked up in there just means it's nicely out the way. I really like I that. I will put it back away. <laughs> um, Richard, do you want to just, if I take the camera for a second, could you just walk us through the helm I, position? I certainly will, yeah. So helm seat has an adjustable um, squab on the, the base, so it's enable you to stand in front of the seat without having to move it backwards and forwards an awful lot uh, and also we touched on it earlier on from a short-handed perspective with the door or both doors open but the side gate which I don't know whether you can see yeah. down here with that open you can step straight off through with all of the, the controls at hand um, throttle adjustable steering um, which is a, a standard Volvo um, item um, yep. so the steering wheel itself tilts but one of the things with all of these Sargo boats, and it's been copied by a few others, is the adjustable steering console. <laughs> That's so, so that cool. now pulls forward. So when you're actually sat back, you can adjust the seat as well, pull yourself forward. Absolutely perfect controls everywhere you want to go. Yeah. It makes a huge difference to A, shorthanded, but even time on the water. These boats are designed, you know, cross channel are, are something they do all the time from here. Uh, but they're designed to go all over the place. So if you can sit for a few hours at a time, yeah. it just makes life easy. Well, something that's always struck me whenever I go on one of the Sargos, I, I tend to go out and do drone footage, you go out, play around Southampton Water. It's never enough for me. I want to go, I want to go on a proper trip. I said to Richard recently, next time you're doing a delivery to the Channel Islands, I want to come. Um, but I want to come when it's rough. No, no, I think you, you, your words were when it's a gin and tonic trip. Oh, no, well, we don't talk about that. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, they're boats that they des they're designed to be used, and that's what I love about them. They're practical, they're comfortable, um, but you want to take them out and actually use them. That's what they're designed for. Um, practicality wise, your controls are just up here, so you can see everything lit up there your chart lights, um, your black water tamp, your um, table lift, uh, your windlass there as well, and then your main power switch is really easy. They're not just nestled into a cupboard that requires digging around, they're just up there in a sensible position. And then your Volvo gauges are right here at perfect eye level, um, so you've got uh, manual gauges here. Um, and then all of your electrical side of things, including the uh, the autopilot, is just down here. In fact, I've just noticed that's a, a touchscreen autopilot. I'm not used to seeing that. That's, that must be a new innovation. Most one, of them are manual. One of the later innovations, and as you can see just from the plotter, this is a, a slightly larger plotter than standard, um, but on the, on the plotter we can see the chart that comes with it, which is the top of the range. Uh, if you want to go to the Azores, obviously fuel <laughs> range would stop you, yeah. <laughs> but uh, it covers a huge area as well. Uh, so this boat, as it is, uh, comes with a huge amount of equipment. Uh, the adjustable searchlight that's on the radar arch, so that does a 360 and up and down. Um, you have, as Andrew um, commented earlier on, the Mento Marine Auto Trim Tab system, uh, and then wipers. Um, this one has wash wipe, um, anchor and nav light, signal horn, uh, demister system for the boat so that when the actually engine's up to temperature you're not relying or having to rely on cold weather because people do use them all year round yep. the strap line of the all season boat um, is you, you can actually heat the whole cabin from a heat exchanger on, off the engine yep. it's, it's just taking everything yep. another step forward which makes them fantastic and obviously this one's got the the twin controls here for the uh, bow and stern thrusters. That's perfect. And then just on the side here, uh, you've got controls here for the heating system, um, controls there for the uh, the black water tank, and then you can see there that the, the fire system is charged as well. So everything very practical and easy, easy, accessible. So if I just lift this up and then pop up here, and we'll go down into the main sleeping accommodation. I say main because there's another one. I'll show you that in a second. So as we come down into here, do remember this is a 31 foot boat, so everything has been packed in beautifully. So this is set up at the moment as the ability to have two singles, um, but you do have an infill here, which although that then means you don't have a changing area inside this cabin, um, you'd fill that in, that would then be a large double bed, and of course you do still have a changing area, which is just in here. And then if you need the privacy, as Richard's just done there, you can close that door, and then this whole area has turned into, you know, it's, it's a cabin, but you've also got a sort of a walk-in wardrobe a style here as well. It's lit. And of course, you also have your own heads. So if we go into here, open the door, you've got a nice heads, which doubles up as a wet room. So you can draw this sh um, shower curtain that goes all the way around. Um, the shower just pulls out from the, um, from the tap, pops onto the bracket there, and then this turns it into a shower room. So it's a very practical place 
Always makes me laugh. I like these as well. Just to toilet roll holders that stop the water going on them. <laughs> it's a practical little thing. What like more them. could you need? Exactly. <laughs> Anything to add down there? Or have I probably covered? No, I think you've covered that very well, Andrew. There's plenty of storage down there underneath both sides and um, a huge amount in the front underneath the berth, actually. Cool. Um, which everybody seems to forget about. Um, but yeah, you covered that very well. Nice. Well, I'll let you do the next cabin because there's another one. There is. So hiding just underneath this seat. Um, it's all gas strutted, which is lovely. So you just lift that up and it stays into position. I'll step out the boat and Richard, you can go down into the next so we're cabin. going down into another, would you believe, double cabin. So down the steps into the, the aft cabin here. Um, this actually has all of the uh, cushions for the outside on here as well. Um, but yeah, this is a, a double cabin. You lie crossways, has a, a, a very nice light um, space up here where you get lots of sunlight in, opening hatch, um, heating outlet. Um, Again, very unusual to find two doubles um, as standard on a, a 31 foot boat. Um, you know, they, they are very, very well thought through. Absolutely. So I'll let you come back up from there. But it does mean that, you know, from a cruising point of view, you can go away, um, you can go away with two couples and have um, privacy. You know, you've got your own space. Um, you've got two separate cabins and totally separated from each other. So I really like that. It's nice. It's very, very good. Um, so let's go and walk around. One of the things I'll point out here um, is that the, the Sargos don't have a step up. So if we walk around here now, you can see that the, um, the whole um, floor here s gently sweeps all the way up to the bow, which I think is fantastic. And lots of the other brands actually have a step in there, which people can trip over for. So it's, not, it's a nice feature. I think it's unique to the Sargo. In this, it is this unique style. to the Sargo. It's the only one in the walk around that doesn't have a, a step in the, the side. And it's not necessarily it's a trip hazard. Yeah. It's the fact that all of a sudden these guardrails become calf height. And of course they so, do. Yeah. Yeah, so and because of their intended uses, which is all year, all season, they, uh, you know, the safety is one of the, the key things. Um, and when you look at the depth and the width of the decks, yeah. it doesn't get any bigger or any better on anybody else's. Um, you know, the USBs of the boat are using it all year round. Yeah. The two side doors give you access both sides, which make it very, very, it's all standard stuff, it makes it very easy to use. And one of the, you know, the adages of, of these boats, or any boat, is the easier it is to use, the more you'll use it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, and it's just the, the chunkiness always um, strikes me. And even down here, you've got the, um, the, the, I always get these around the wrong way. That's the push pit, that's the pulpit. Pulpit, there you go, that's the pulpit. So the pulpit there is designed, again, very much looking at the Scandi side of things. So you can do a lot of um, bow boarding, so you can step on and off there. And then you've got this lovely big ch uh, chunky anchor windlass in here, and then access just inside this locker there to the anchor chain as well. Now these boats can also be fitted with a stern anchor. Um, this they one can, doesn't yes. have it, but it's very easy to fit. Again, that's very popular out um, in those countries. It is absolutely <laughs> very unusual to see a boat in Scandinavia actually with a bow anchor. Uh, they always have this, the stern anchors going with them. Interesting, it didn't style a boating it, in different it, it areas. It is, it's just different. And you, you know, you can't please everybody all the time. Um, and this, this view here is one of the views I absolutely love about these boats because they just look so purposeful. And I've been out in some pretty nasty weather pushing through and these wipers clearing all the water away. They just do a, a great job. Absolutely. There's also a nice molded in seat that you can see here. Um, so if you're in a marina and the sun's in a particular direction, you can come up with your family and sit on the bow of the boat, which yeah, I really absolutely. like as well. And cushions and teak coverings and all sorts of stuff are available for, for all of these insets as well. The owner of this boat particularly wanted it for um, very easy maintenance, nice. um, hence no deck colourings, coverings, nothing else. Um, it's the, the mooring he has, he, he wanted to keep it on a mooring yep. uh, and, and that's why. You literally just wa wa wash it down and off you go, yeah. isn't it? It's really nice. Um, I must admit, I have made a mistake earlier on about the solar panel. This boat didn't have one fitted as standard, but the roof was prepared for it so that it w is available to do. Nice. Well, you, you, talked, you talked about it as an option then, shall we say? Let's say that, yes. <laughs> Keep everybody um, happy. So Nick's here. So Nick's, Nick's our broker at Parker Adams. Um, so let's have a look at the machinery side of things. Okay. If you stay, take a step back, I'll lift the engine hatch up, which that, as you can see is effortless. That's interesting note because it's not a hydraulic, it's not a electric no. um, lifted hatch, but ha that was just so easy. You yeah, just one handed lifted it up there. Absolutely. And you know, on, on boats of this size, um, keeping away from too many electronics is always a good thing yeah, in my, true. my view. So we talked about earlier on the engine, sorry, the engine hatch, yes. The, <laughs> the table uh, stored under the engine hatch. Table stores under there, it just slides out. It's beautifully engineered to done. And the legs are underneath this seat here. So everything seems to work. And a great big lump of a Volvo 
D6 400. Absolutely beautiful. Um, 55 hours. It's or basically so. new. I mean, if you, you talk about a demonstrator boat, you'd probably put more hours on a demonstrator, wouldn't oh, you? Oh, definitely. So, we have um, done. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, the, and the, you can see from the space down here, everything's sorted out. All the batteries are labelled. There's a storage box over on the other side. Your screen washes over there. Holding tanks out here. So not that we didn't get any smells, but if you did, it's all in the engine room. Heaters in the engine room. But the Volvo engineers love them. They can get on the, on the boats, walk around easily. Um, but this boat obviously is still in warranty, very much so. Yeah. No, so, it's amazing to see that. They, they, the euphemism, eat your dinner off there, I think, isn't it? Ne never more true. Yeah, it is absolutely. absolutely immaculate in there. Okay, I'll uh, mind your toes, I'll drop the lid back down. Toes are free. It's on gas struts, so it's quite nice and slow. Fantastic. Great stuff. Well, if we just grab a seat and probably start to wrap up, is there anything else about the boat that I could have talked about or we could have covered that you can think of? I think sitting here now, uh, not a lot, but one thing we did both forget was the galley. Indeed. Which is one thing that, whilst Nick's here... Completely forgot that. How did we forget about the galley? I don't know. We completely forgot about the galley. You forgetting about a drinks fridge is, uh, <laughs> is normally quite strange. So, so, here we have the galley. So, um, the lovely thing about the galley on these boats is that it's a concealed galley, really, because when these are down, it just looks like a normal sideboard. Um, it's all got the beautiful wood of... Um, on there but you lift them up and you can see this absolutely spotless i don't think they've ever cooked anything on here <laughs> if they have they cleaned up after themselves so you've got really lovely stainless steel um, backs on here so any heat that's on there doesn't damage the wood from this point of view if there's any heat or any moisture coming up from the sink doesn't damage the wood again just thinking about everything double sink here or one and a half sinks and just a little touch that i really like is the water tank gauge is just here which is perfect because where you're using the water most is going to be here at the sink. So that's where you put the gauge, sensible spot. Um, there's also lots of storage down here. So you've got two lockers. You can open that up. There's a bin nestled on there. And then that locker is really deep and it's got a shelf in there as well. Um, there's a foam detector on here as well. So there's a gas detector. So if there were any gas leaks, that would pick it up. And then just inside here, you've got more storage. And then on the top here, you have there's that space there for a fire blanket. Uh, the boat is, as we've seen with the hob there, it's fitted with, um, with gas, and that powers both those three burners, but it also powers a gas oven in here, which means you can yeah, cook, cook more substantial meals there. Oven and grill. Oven and grill. Yeah, there absolutely. You go. Um, and then underneath the floor mat, just at the bottom here, which is something that everybody misses. A lift is, is, Yeah, there's a massive oh, storage locker. It's got a relatively small entrance, but that goes back oh, wow. right the end of the day. I didn't even know that existed there. <laughs> Glad uh, you pointed it, that out. It's amazing how, how much you do find. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I like that. And again, just even th little things like that, to stop the hatch um, rattling, you've got a little rubber um, grommet that goes all the way around there. So it's just little things like that. They've been thought about. The Sargos are very much an evolution boat because the shipyard's been building them for so many years. When customers give people feedback, give the shipyard feedback, they act on it and they make the changes. That is absolutely true. Yeah. They really do. It's, it's a pleasure to deal with. Yeah, that's really So if we grab a seat down here as well. So I really, really enjoyed coming in one of these. Say, normally the second-hand boats that we sell, um, they're typically sort of two, three years, five years old. But the, it's nice to see how some of those changes have come across over the years. And on one which is for sale, um, at a significant saving from a new price, Very available so. right away. Because how many new boats have you got coming in this year? Oh, I'll put you on the spot now. You have um, in the next four months, seven, seven. No, three months, seven boats. It's, it's good. It's, uh, it doesn't sound an awful lot compared to some of the, the sort of the, the bigger yards, no. but it's, um, it's, a, it's a lot for us. Well, the other thing as well that's really interesting is new boat supply has got much, much easier now. And a lot of the manufacturers, if you want to get hold of a new boat, then they have got availability. Not so with the Sargos. The Sargos, because they're so popular, they're such great boats, there's still quite a wait from the factory. Uh, absolutely. For one of these, the, the quickest one we could get you would be November, December, this year, yep. um, so if you want one for the spring, this is your option. Um, yep. And yeah, we're, for the bigger boats, we're into 2025 already. And talking about bigger boats, you've got some 45s arriving. I'm very excited about going out in the 45. <laughs> I'm sure there'll be a video <laughs> or two made for those, Andrew. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, as always, thank you for watching. I hope you found this an interesting um, video. It's brilliant to have Richard and his wealth of experience with these boats on this, um, this walkthrough tour. So thanks as always for watching and thank you for, for being part of it. Thank you very much and I hope I didn't bore you to death. <laughs> uh, no comment. <laughs> thanks. Thanks so much and look forward to seeing you on the next video.